Well, Ohio State at Penn State tomorrow night. Once again, under the lights as the spotlight figures to be on the Buckeyes' high octane offense and that Nittany Lion defense, which ranks first in the nation in rushing D, allowing just 15 points a game. Mark has more in this week's Buckeye Beat. Despite four straight games with 50 or more points and over 500 yards of offense in each of those victories, Buckeye head coach Urban Meyer says Ohio State has to improve offensively, particularly on the line. Rutgers was a step up. Um, you know, I think Maryland, Rutgers, you're, you're getting better and better. And, and uh, once again, I don't want to say that they didn't have a good defense line because they certainly did. Uh, we did not, the last two weeks, we haven't played as good offense, offensively up front as we expect. And that will... That will really surface this week if, if we, we have to play better in the offense line than we did Saturday. As redshirt freshman quarterback JT Barrett gets more comfortable in the offense, he continues to distribute the ball among his many weapons, which hasn't stopped his receivers from lobbying on the sidelines for more lobs their way. But there's no question, they're always open. They always should have got the ball, could have got the ball, and they'll, until you watch the film, maybe they weren't. But but um, I don't think that's a negative. I think that's a positive. You want a kid that says, I want the ball. Throw me the ball. I want to touch the ball. Because if you don't, if you've got a bunch of kids that don't want the ball, you got major problems. That, that is one thing that you come off the sideline. Even if you're open or not, you're going to tell the quarterback you're open because you want to at least get looked at or something. But, I mean, you know, JT, is, he's doing a great job. And, I, you know, I really, I really think he stepped up to the challenge of being a quarterback here. And, um, uh, although we do tell him that we're open, he, he still goes through his reason. He's making the correct throws and he's leading us to victory. As for the Silver Bullets, Buckeye defense will be paying close attention to Nittany Lions sophomore quarterback Christian Hackenberg. Uh, he's a really good quarterback. Um, he's he's up there at the top and he's done a pretty good job, especially um, you know being a young player stepping in there when he had to uh, and taking the reins of the team. And I know that their coach and their team has a lot of confidence in him. So. Um, you know, he'll, he'll be a challenge that we face right there, just the fact that he can drop back and do some of the things and take control of the game the way he does. Well, we know fans all have derisive nicknames for some schools, and Ohio State fans will occasionally refer to Penn State University, PSU, as Pick 6 University. As Ohio State does have a rich history of intercepting and returning passes for touchdowns against the Nittany Lions. Mike Miller from WIMA 1150, our Buckeye Insider, joins us now. And Mike, as we look at this Ohio State-Penn State matchup, you look at the turnover margin, Penn State minus one on the season, mm -hmm. Buckeyes plus five. They had three more turnover takeaways Saturday against Rutgers and another defensive touchdown. Yeah, and you take that stat into account, Mark, and then you think about how things are trending. For the Buckeyes, they're trending quite well uh, from a defensive standpoint. Last uh, few games, uh, the defense has actually scored uh, for Ohio State. They're piling up the uh, uh, interceptions. Uh, Penn State has very much struggled. I think really a big part of that whole turnover situation is going to be, do the Buckeyes get ahead of Penn State and force the Lions uh, to throw the ball around the lot? That could be trouble for the Nittany Lions. We've talked about the problems with the offensive line on Penn State, and mm -hmm. James Franklin brought this up. They yeah. have just one scholarship tackle on the Ooh. senior, junior, sophomore classes. Mm -hmm. That's another way how those scholarship restrictions have hurt yep. this Penn State team in terms of depth. Yeah, and that's brutal, frankly, and, and we've seen it. Those who've watched Penn State this year, they were pretty good early in the year against a, a better-than-average Akron team, against a, a Central Florida, but the attrition with their offensive line and injuries have started to pile up for Penn State, hence their inefficiency on offense. I guess from, from the Nittany Lions standpoint, the hope is that the off week has allowed them to solidify that a little bit. I'm not sure. Yeah, and where that offensive line hurts, not only is pressure on Christian Hackenberg, yeah. they have trouble running the ball. Yeah, they've got a pretty good running back. Bill Belton's very good. He's experienced, but he's just about it. No one else has stepped up uh, for Penn State. And again, suddenly you can't run the ball. You're forced to throw. And against a defensive line like Ohio State, and even with those blitzing linebackers, we saw Darren Lee last week pretty impressive for Ohio State could spell trouble for the Nittany Lions. Certainly one of the interesting subplots of Saturday night's game mm -hmm. is Larry Johnson coming back yeah. to Happy Valley, an 18-year mm -hmm. assistant coach at Penn State. He said he left on his own terms. He didn't want to go through the, the process of a new coach coming in again like he did with Bill O'Brien. Yep. 
it's going to be interesting to see the reaction of the fans to Larry Johnson returning to Happy Valley. Yeah, I can't imagine it's not positive because Larry Johnson is such a such a smooth, mellow guy in regular conversation. I understand he could be quite a firebrand as a coach in practice and in a game, but you know his son was an All-American uh, running back at Penn State. He's heavily ingrained in their history. I surely would hope it'll be a positive uh, reception for Larry Johnson, but you know how some fans can be. Other side of the ball with Ohio State, the offense, the way it's clicking right now, JT mm -hmm. Barrett hasn't faced a defense statistically as good as this Nittany Lion defense mm -hmm. since week two in Virginia Tech. And we know what Virginia Tech did to JT Barrett in the Ohio State offense. We've seen it in with our eyes. We've seen it in statistics. This Ohio State offense has improved. This Ohio State offense has definitely improved, and, and it starts up front with the offensive line. And that's what ultimately could should probably win the day for the Buckeyes Saturday night. If that line gives JT Barrett some time, he's proven that he can make plays. My biggest concern might be early in the contest with the atmospherics there at uh, Penn State. As we know, JT Barrett has been a little soft with his play calling. That is, how loud does he yell with the play calling? I've been down on the field like you, Mark, quite a bit. I've never really heard him yell out that play call. So Buckeyes overcome that hurdle. Offensive line performs. I don't think the atmospherics and all that's going to matter. It's interesting because we always knew about Braxton Miller and the clap to, yeah. to trigger the offense. JT Barrett doesn't clap. I don't know if that's necessarily a, a reaction to Michigan State with what they were doing with Nebraska yeah. and clapping to kind of distract the, the signal call, but that, that is going to be something to keep an eye on with yep. JT Barrett as how he does trigger the offense. Your prediction for Saturday night? Well, I've got high hopes, frankly. I refer back to last year where Ohio State won the battle on both sides of the ball quite dramatically. And as we've broken it down here uh, through the week and certainly in, in the last few minutes, I think the matchups very much favor Ohio State across the, across the ball on both sides. I think the Buckeyes are going to roll on prime time, something like 45-17. to 17. Of course, last year Ohio State beat Penn State 63-14. They won the last two meetings between the Nittany Lions, and they won the last several in Happy Valley. Andy, back to you.